So this video is about for loops and data frames and in particular I'm looking at this stack overflow problem where initially straight away the user has said how do I write a for loop to merge the production companies in one single row and they've kind of like they're referring to this data frame in some way and he's talking about I have a following data frame and before I even actually look at a question, the first thing I see is that it's got the word for loop and data frame in kind of like the same sentence. And I actually posted a comment somewhere down below, which seemed to get an immediate like, which is when I see a for loop and a data frame in the same sentence, I know there's an error. And straight away, someone commented on that and sort of like up liked it. And the reason why is this, is anyone that's in the know on this type of stuff is with the whole purpose of data frames is to speed up code and, and what it does is the pandas data frame which leverages off of numpy is a contiguous array of memory which is basically all the memory combined into into like a single space and also of a single type so it's homogeneous and, and it's all it's all um, classified together the pandas data frame is heterogeneous but still all of the data is kind of like uh, collected together in memory as opposed to a python list where you might iterate or an iterable where you might iterate through each item of this collection object and uh, and go that way so the data, the, the purpose of the data frame and the purpose of NumPy is to speed up this type of process and it, and it immensely speeds it up. So um, the minute that a relatively seasoned coder sees a for loop and a data frame, they should automatically, the alarm bell should be ringing as in it's bad practice. So I, I jump straight over to the actual code itself. So I've got VS Code open and, you know, I've, I've um, exported this like I've created this like sample data frame here. We can sort of like I can print it out. So if I hit F5 there and run it, well, let's just do, uh, I'll hit a print statement. So print data frame, I'm kind of like hit F5 just to run it. F5 to run our code. And here we have the actual data frame down at the bottom. So name, age, gender, and state. And I actually took this particular one from um, Claude AI, which I think I also have open. So I just got to make sure that I get it onto the screen. And I asked Claude AI to build me that actual sample data frame. So let me try and get it on the screen if I can. Claude, I'll just move that to the top. Or the move to top so basically over there with Claude AI I've actually asked well it did make a slight error but it was very very helpful um, over there I've just typed in create an example data frame and that's the data frame that he created so I've copied and pasted that and here's the here's the data frame that comes out of it so perfect we've now got something like an example to work with and this was good enough because here it's got a bunch of males and a bunch of like ages. And then I just said, uh, my next question was, was how do I get a male um, who's above 30 years old? Just knowing that, you know, there's a few males in here and there's a few ages that are above 30 and a few that are, are outside of 30. And it's come up with it with an idea. And this is one of the ideas. I'm not going to use this particular one because it's used a logical land in there. I'm not a fan of logical lands. There's... I'm going to show another um, what I what I consider to be actually a better way of doing it than with the logical land. And the other thing, it, it, it um, inadvertently used the filter keyword because filter is actually a keyword in Python as a as a variable. So I kind of like pointed that out. Filter is a Python keyword, and it's a like. Uh, we uh, corrected itself and said use the word mask. So I was like, okay, um, that kind of like works. And this sort of like looks good. So I'm going to actually take this. In fact, I'll take all of this and I'm going to go back to the VS Code. Um, let's get it up there, back to the VS Code. And I'm going to paste all of this into the VS Code. But what I'm actually going to do is this, which is DF data frame. Let's just say, open it over here. Put that into square brackets. Control Z, I meant to put that into square brackets and put mask into a quotation like that. So let's just create an extra column in our data frame. The column is now called mask and it's going to be uh, DF of gender equals male. But instead of putting and, I'm going to put times. And the reason why is this is either true or false. 
over here and this is either true or false over here and i don't want to the, the reason why i do that is because in the actual example if we look down at the example of what it does over here is it when it does print result i think it will well oh here it is when we do when it does print result it just prints like the remaining result which is a, a tiny bit smaller and what, what i actually want to show is i want to create the whole column and show all of the trues and falses. And then if I want to extract this output from that, I can I can do that. That's why I don't do an AND here. So just going back to the code, I put a time sign in here, and I'm actually applying this now to the whole column. So it's going to go through each item in the column. This is called this process is called vectorizing. So right. So instead of we could do a for loop, and we could do for every um, for every gender, for I in gender, um, if it's a male, and then, um, you know, check its age. And then if it's the age, um, if the age is above 30, you know, give it a true or give it a false. Now, that's good. That's slow. And what's happening? What's happening if you were to do that? There's nothing like wrong with doing it per se, other than it's slow is it would still produce the same result but it, but it's it's then not using the capabilities of the fact that um, the data frame is vectorized so this is just going to be tremendously faster like 10x faster so over here then i can then do well i can first of all print the mask so, so print df um of mask there so, you know, I can still like print that. So F5 to run it. But more importantly, actually, is that because we can print that one column now, we'll see that there's a bunch of trues and falses in there. I have here F9. There we go over here. But more importantly, is actually we can just do print the data frame over there and hit F5. And I, I presume I should probably zoom into this, actually, so that we can see a bit closer. So this is the actual code. And then the code is running down below. What we actually see is the name over here, then the age, then the gender, then the state. And finally, we see the mask here. We see that it's false because this person was a male, but he was less than 30. Then false again because it was a female. Then false again because it was a male who again was less than 30. And finally, we got a true because we got a male who was greater than 30. So that works really nice. This is super fast. This is vectorizing a uh, pandas data frame. And this is actually the way that you should do it. So if you're ever seeing a for loop in a pandas data frame, uh, alarm flags for, for loops in, in data frames, they're kind of like the last of uh, three or four different types of options that you should be using. So if you see that a, a, a red flag should be um, should be alerted. If you found this useful, hit the like button, hit the comment button. Um, if you if you feel like you've got any comments in it, and uh, hit the follow button. And even if you don't like it, also hit the like button and the follow button. And uh, and that's really it. Thanks for watching.